is there a proper way to do it? Uh, is there a reason we can't all run barefoot all the time? Mark, uh, I want you to start here. Um, we all have two feet. We can get out and run right now. Is there a reason we all shouldn't run barefoot? I mean, I think everyone would I think it's a long process um, of where you're starting. My, my five and uh, seven year old, they can go run barefoot. They, they've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, and we, we have some fun running clubs in West Virginia at the elementary schools and uh, invite them to throw their shoes off and go run the trails. And then the uh, following week, it's like, if you want to put your shoes back on, go ahead. And none of them put their shoes back on. But then there's the rest of us that, um, and I'll just give you, share a little bit of my story about kind of learning this stuff is, um, you know, I learned she running about four or five years ago with Danny's first first edition of the book. Before that, had a foot surgery in 2000, been a heel toe runner and had a pr pretty much fused arthritic first toe joint um, that I had to get surgically fixed. And, you know, the traditional approach is stop running. They tell you to stop running. So I started to learn how to run without pushing off. You know, kind of understood some of those principles of lean and lift, um, read Danny's book and had a tool that I could actually give to patients you know, because I couldn't explain all this in a 10-minute clinic visit. Um, didn't really understand how the elevated heel and the and that affected it until I um, was working with a, a Brooks footwear designer, a Trip Allen, and working on some flat and minimal shoes. I actually have one here. Yeah. So what Trip told me to do was actually take a centimeter uh, and a hacksaw and cut off the heel. So what that shoe was now was a perfectly flat shoe. He said, just do that and talk to me in two weeks, and you'll understand what the elevated heels doing and it was yeah I got it and I ran 50 milers marathons and until you know started working with Danny Abshire at Newton because they were all about education Brooks decided not to pursue at that time the minimal shoes or the flat shoes and it didn't fit with me as a doc trying to teach this so I, I, I called Danny but for most of us right now I probably do about half of my running in a complete barefoot shoe you know a piece of Kevlar on my foot most of that's trail but uh, a year ago, I don't think I could have done that. On the road, if I'm running hard on the road, a shoe like the Newton, which is flat, but actually has some return, actually feels a little better, gives me some return. But you know, now I can actually, I, I could go run a marathon now, you know, not in my bare feet, because my soles aren't tough enough, but I could go run a marathon in a, you know, a piece of Kevlar or a five finger. It wouldn't be the fastest marathon, but I could do it. But that really is taken. I do a lot of one-legged exercises. I basically spend two hours a day standing on one foot answering email at night, you know, trying to push my big toe into the ground to get all those muscles that allow me to stand on one foot because that's all running is, is standing on one foot. So I'm basically running while answering email because then to actually run, I just fall forward a little bit and pick up my heel. So it's a whole kind of uh, education progression of, you know, do as much as you can in your working day to facilitate good posture, good form, proper strength in the right positions, and just to trust your body and do what's fun. You know, it's, to me, it's fun to go a, up in a trail with rocks and, uh, you know, something I can feel every rock. That's great. I love it. You know, when you're coming downhill, you, like Zola's saying, you just sense the ground and you're balanced, and there's something about that you can't explain, but it is what it is. You know, you feel it and you know it. Um, so that would be my advice is trust your body and slow. I just wanted to pick up something that um, Zola said. Zola was talking about going barefoot and how it's made her feet stronger and how it feels great. And I think that that has huge health implications. The most common foot ailment is plantar fasciitis. And I think not even runners, I think you know, across the entire population, the public, um, if more people went with bare feet or went with minimal footwear more percentage of the time, the foot would get stronger. So what happens is you have the foot and the arch, and the muscles are what hold this up, and they're contractile. And then underneath this is the plantar fascia. So every time the foot comes down with every foot strike, the plantar fascia gets stretched and gets strained. And the stronger those muscles are to control that, the less strain goes to the plantar fascia. So you can see that it, we have basically, through our footwear choices, have trained our feet to be lazy, and I think we can reverse this epidemic of plantar fasciitis with this new footwear movement. In fact, I'm really on a mission to get my profession to think differently about the foot. So for example, when somebody comes to me with plantar fasciitis, I might put them in a temporary orthotic 
for a short period of time. I might tape them, but I get them out of that ASAP because if someone came to me with a neck problem, I wouldn't keep them in a neck brace for the rest of their life. We don't do that. As clinicians, we would think that was silly. But for some reason, we've changed the way we think about the foot, and we think we got to put them in a pair of orthotics. And not only do you need a pair of orthotics, you need four of them because you have to have them in every single pair of shoes because you don't ever want to go without those orthotics. Um, so I, I agree, get flat. I think flip-flops are not the evil empire. There's an article every single summer that comes out. Flip-flops cause injuries. It's not the flip-flops, I'm here to tell you, it's your weak feet. So um, I think strong feet are healthy feet, and it's gonna, it, this is going to transcend not just you and us, the running population, but the entire public, I think. Excellent. Yep, jump in, Danny. Uh, the one thing that, that I think that we're hoping that the whole shoe industry works towards is producing shoes that don't immobilize your feet because that's exactly what Irene is talking about. And most of the shoes nowadays um, do immobilize your feet. So any shoes that you can get that help all of that action of the foot really work, even if you're not running barefoot, you can run barefoot-like. And the other last thing I would say with, as you as retailers, I mean, People are going to go to you to answer their questions about injuries before they'll probably go to a doctor. You guys are cheaper to go to, for one thing. <laughs> and, uh, and so you're their first line of information. So I would highly suggest that all of you in the forum clinics really try to pick up these tips and practice them when you go home. Really try to get to the point where you feel like your running form is pretty clean, pretty efficient, like what Danny is talking about, what we've been talking about so that you can be a better, uh, you know, so you can work better with your clients. And they will come back to you more and more, and they will just rely on you guys to be the experts because you are the first line of defense. I'm going to sort of uh, echo some of Irene's comments. Um, there's somebody in this room who has a, a foot which is better than everybody else's foot in this room, and it's almost. <laughs> okay. During her formative years, she had no shoes on. When her bone structure was developing, when her tendons were strengthening, when the articulations of the joints in her, her foot were developing, okay, she was not wearing cushioned filters, all right? So her foot has basically developed from day one stronger than everybody else's who was in these kind of, you know, these marshmallows. Um, so I, I think it's important to, to realize that, you know, we talk about, you know, who can run barefoot today and who needs some, some adaptation period. Um, there's sort of three things which we like to talk about that are pretty critical if someone wants to run bare feet. Um, one is, and we sort of hinted on these gradually, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of, these are kind of my rules. Um, if you want to run barefoot, one is you have to have enough mobility of, your, of the structures in the back side of the leg. I'm going to make that very gross because people think about, oh, I have a gastroc and a soleus and an Achilles and a plantar fascia. Guess what? They're all connected, okay? So you have a tightness somewhere which is developed because you're in high heel shoes all day long. And so, you know, to, to take that and go to flat instantly, people have problems with Achilles tendonitis. And one of the reasons why the shoe industry is sort of a little slow to adopt this kind of dropping the heel is because they're going to make a shoe which is a dropped heel. And then your client comes, your, your uh, you know, uh, customer comes back and says, oh my gosh, this shoe is horrible. It caused my Achilles pain. So obviously you guys get that. But, but uh, so one, you have to have enough mobility of the structures in the rear foot. Have to. Second thing is balance. So we talked about you know uh, balance being important in stance, right? So you want to be comfortable and stable in the stance phase. Uh, you know I love having folks stand on one foot as a little screening test, and most of them fly a little Cessna. You know they're kind of out with wings and, and wobbling around. So you have to have good balance control. And and we're talking about where that balance control comes from. It comes from the foot. So we're talking about strengthening the feet. There's a little muscle which you might not have heard of called your flexor hallucis brevis, and that muscle is responsible for stabilizing the arch. And it's absolutely critical that we learn to drive the big toe down into the ground. You know, yes, there's a reason evolutionary why we have a big toe, but we need to make sure we know how to use it. And so I think if you think about you know, those three criteria, if you have enough mobility uh, in the structures of the back of the leg to roll over, if you have good balance and that balance comes from utilizing the right muscles in the feet, you're at a huge advantage to be able to run with a barefoot or minimalist shoe or run more correctly. Those are things I like to have in any runner, but are paramount for folks who are going to be running uh, in barefoot uh, and, and, and minimal shoes. Um, and then just one little side point, you guys being retailers coming from the mentality of being told forever that, you know, mobile foot, rigid shoe, stop the foot, stop everything from happening. Um, and, and, you know, the stiffer foot, you know, we want to try and increase motion in those folks and sort of kind of been the gospel for a long time. And, and you're probably like, well, wait, I'm really confused. This is going completely counter to everything I've been told. And, and like Irene said, you know, we're learning a lot in these last few years. And so I think there's a lot more to be learned. 
Um, one of the studies we're actually writing up right now, uh, just to again show you how um, you know, it's, it's not this one for all, um, the body can actually adapt and does adapt. And one of the things that we've seen is when you have folks run with different foot types, so folks who are very, you know, Pez plane is very floppy, uh, hypermobile feet. Um, they have a different strategy than folks who are kind of more middle of the road, and different strategy uh, for with folks who are more uh, more stiff feet. So basically, the body, even you know, with different alignment, can adapt to the ground. We see different strategies in the the way you position your foot prior to contact, the amount of motion you use during stance. So again, your body can run barefoot. Again, how much? Depends on a lot of factors, okay. But but the body can run barefoot of all foot types, and it's just important that we make a, you know a gradual progression of these things, so you don't have folks going cold turkey and saying, "Oh, barefoot's bad." No, it's something we need to think about adopting slowly over time with the correct building blocks.